it would be the young Hopi Indian boy's 13th birthday. He was lean and muscular, a youth who enjoyed the world all around him. He loved going for long walks and observing nature, and the boy was always in awe at the varied and colorful creation which the Great Spirit had placed all around him and his people. The boy was especially fond of camping. He would take his woven blankets and head far out from the village to sleep underneath the magnificent blanket of stars that Gichimanito, the Great Spirit, had laid out across the endless heavens. Lying there in the pitch blackness, the boy felt as if he were the only one in the whole world. He would lay there breathless as an occasional light would streak across the sky, knowing these to be messengers of the Great Spirit. And often, as he slept in the desert, the boy would receive visions, visions from the spirit world. And it was one of these in particular that brought great joy to his heart. In fact, he could not contain the happiness that he felt. So he called his family together in their Pueblo dwelling so that he could share the vision with them. Grey Wolf, his grandfather, was seated cross-legged on a blanket spread on the floor. His father and mother were there along with uncles, aunts, brothers, and sisters. They were all very anxious to hear what he had to tell them. The wizened old grandfather raised his hand and there was silence. And he spoke. His voice was gentle yet strong in his advanced age. You have been given a special vision. Speak to us what the spirits have shared with you. The boy stood and looked across his family. A spirit came to me one night recently when I slept out in the desert alone, and it was a beautiful spirit dressed unlike any of us. His clothes were all of the purest white, and he shone with the light of the sun. And his clothes went all the way down to the ground, so that his feet alone were just barely uncovered. Were you afraid, son? his father inquired. No, no, there was no reason to fear him. He smiled and he said, Greetings. And then he said, I have come from the creator of all things, and I have glad news to share with you. You must take my message and share it with your people. From the creator, his mother exclaimed, and he chose you to bring us this special message. Please go on, tell us what the spirit told you. A look of awe came over the boy's face as he continued. He told me that soon in a land far, far away, the creator would come to earth and be born as a baby to live with men, the men that he created. And the Spirit said that the Creator had a very special mission that would be a great blessing to all of his children. He said that the Creator is already here, but has not yet been born. And the grandfather asked, Where is this faraway land? Can we go there and see the Creator ourselves? And he replied, he said only that he is across many waters and lands, and the Creator will dwell there with the other sheep, but that his mission of love is as much a blessing for us as them, and to all people through all time, past and time to come. One of the uncles smiled and remarked, I look on a boy who will soon be a man, and he speaks as one who will be a great prophet and shaman. What else did the Spirit tell you? Well, he told me, but the boy stammered, well, I'm afraid to speak of this, Father. His father replied, You don't need to fear, son. You must share all the vision that he gave to you. And the boy replied, But such things are not for a boy to talk about with adults. Please go on, my grandson. You must, the elder grandfather implored. Well, he said that the baby creator would be born of a very special maiden that has never known a man. She is a virgin, yet with child. And he said the baby would grow with no sins, and that he would die when he was a man, and pay for all sins of all people with his own blood, if they will but come to him and ask. All of their faces looked astonished. How could such a thing be possible, they all wondered as the, the boy prophet continued. We will not see him as we walk this life, but the Spirit told me that he would be there to meet us when we go to the next life. He told me over and over how much the Creator loves us, and that we are his children. He showed me what the Creator will look like when he has grown, he didn't look much different than us, but the color of his skin was different, and his face was covered with hair. His eyes, though, they were deep and had love and compassion for all. When will this creator be born? An uncle asked. Well, we will hold a great feast to celebrate his coming. And the spirit told me to, to watch for his star in the sky. And when I see it, my eyes must follow the star across the sky. And when it disappears from view, the creator child will have been born. 
Then his grandfather observed, The spirits seem to consider you a man, from, for no such important message would be trusted to just a boy. It is time that you are given a man's name. Star Watcher, yes, I believe that is what the spirits would want you to be named. And the boy smiled. You are wise, my grandfather. Thank you for such a fine name. Here today I am no longer a boy, but a man amongst men. I am Star Watcher. And for the next several weeks, Star Watcher made a nightly sojourn into the desert, um, to that sacred place where the Spirit had appeared and gave him that great message. And he watched faithfully for the Creator's star, which the Spirit had told him of. One night he was very, very tired and fell into a deep sleep quite quickly. He had no idea how long he had been sleeping, but he woke and he sat bolt straight up. And it was late, and the desert was, was strangely silent and bright, and indeed brighter than when the full moon shines down on the sand. Yet it was not the time of the full moon, and Star Watcher rubbed the sleep from his eyes, and looking up, he saw the star. And in the sky, almost directly above him, was the brightest star that the man Star Watcher had ever seen. It was beautiful. There could be no doubt that this was the Creator's star, and he sat there transfixed by the vision high above him. And soon, in a faraway land, the Creator would be born, clothed in human flesh. Yes, Star Watcher, it is the Creator's star. The voice of that spirit came from beside him. Star Watcher turned to face the handsome spirit. Has the Creator been born yet? Oh, how I wish I could see him to look on the face of the one who made everything that is. It would be a very long journey, Star Watcher, but... There is another way that you will not uh, take your physical body, but rather your spirit. Lay back down on your blanket, and I will cause a vision to fall on you. The eyes of your spirit will see the baby that even now has just been born. And Star Watcher did as, as he was told, and he laid back, and he closed his eyes. In an instant, it was as if he were gone from the desert, and that waters and lands rushed past beneath him. He thought how fast the spirit was able to travel. The setting he appeared at uh, was strange to him, as were the people. All the men had hair on their faces, something the, the men of his people could not grow. There were many animals that were unfamiliar to him. And setting before him on the hay was a most beautiful woman dressed in blue, blue and white robes. And in her arms was lovingly cradled a baby wrapped in rough textured cloth. And Star Watcher heard a whimper from the newborn. And he smiled, and he felt a warmth of happiness all around him. No one was aware of his presence, except for the lovely young woman, who he heard someone call Mary. She could see Star Watcher, and she smiled so gently at him, and with her hand beckoned him to come closer. Come, you have journeyed far to see my baby, your creator, the Son of God. Come and look on his innocent face, Star Watcher. And he walked forward and looked down at the little baby in the swaddling clothes, and he reached out and, and held one of the little pink hands, and the baby squeezed his finger. It was at that moment that everything went dark. The young man struggled to open his eyes, and when they finally, uh, finally did, he found himself back in the desert alone. And he searched the skyline, but the creator's star was gone, and so also was the spirit. Star Watcher felt at great peace within himself. As he sat there, he laid back and closed his eyes, and in the distance a coyote howled. There was the sound of a nearby night bird, and the crickets chirped out a melodic refrain. And in this peace, Star Watcher fell asleep assured of the love of the Creator Spirit, who now was a young baby, who would walk with the men who he himself had created. God's blessing to each and every one of you as we celebrate the birth of that precious baby, our Lord Jesus the Christ.